Skip tracing in real estate for less than one cent. That's right. You can get property owner contact information like phone number and email all for less than a penny. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use Tracerify to skip trace your leads list for real estate. I'll walk you through how to upload a file to skip trace in two ways, no code and with code via the API. This will allow you to use the skip tracing software directly on your CRM. Whether you're using Podio, Go High Level, or something in between, this will work. Stick to the end where I'll go through how to evaluate a deal before contacting the seller. Let's get started. If you're new to skip tracing, it's basically a way to be able to get information on a property owner. An example would be going to list source. Maybe you're a fix and flipper and you're looking to market specifically to homeowners that have their houses in distress. You want to be able to purchase a property at a lower rate and be able to then fix it up for a profit. So here you can search for properties, discover homeowners, generate leads, and then be able to target those prospects more effectively. As an example, let's say if you're looking to acquire leads that are seller finance deals. So where you can actually make a deal with the property owner rather than having to go through the bank, which can really help you in terms of an interest rate that's more favorable for yourself. Here I could use ListSource to search for Chicago, Illinois, look at equity levels that are high. So most likely this person either 91% or 100% owns their property, likelihood to list their home for sale, and some other information. Here we could see there's 35,000 properties that meet this criteria. Usually what happens is that you get this leads list and then you go to websites like Fast People Search that are free, type the addresses in and you get information on the property owner. This will include information like the phone number, email, and sometimes other people that are related within their family structure. Now, what I just walked you through is super manual. Could you imagine if you had a leads list of say 10,000 property owners? This could be really cumbersome to have to do at a manual approach, which is why there's a ton of skip tracing services available to be able to automatically get this data. However, a lot of them charge a pretty steep fee, usually at least 10 cents per lead. So a list that's 10,000 would be $1,000 just to skip trace. However, if you use a site like Tracerify, it's as little as one cent, meaning that a list of 10,000 would cost you $100. How does it actually work? Tracerify looks and searches through the web on sites like Fast People Search and many more to look up property owner information. From there, they cross-reference each one and use some statistical analysis to be able to get the most likely email and phone number for that individual. So once you sign up and it's free to sign up, you can go to your dashboard. In your dashboard, you'll be able to see lists that you've uploaded, how many properties in total, as well as API information. Now, if you use the link below, you will be able to get free API credits to start. You can go to Quick Trace. What this allows you to do is choose a file. So maybe you have a CSV file already that maybe you got from say list source or another source, you could upload it here. And then you'll get an email once the software has finished looping through each of those rows to get information on the property owner. This is pretty self-explanatory, so I'm not gonna walk through this part. Instead, I'm gonna dive into the actual API. So the API is where it gets really interesting. An API is a way to basically send information in a structured way and pass them back between applications. This is how you're able to get, say, property owner information, rent data, comps, skip tracing, all programmatically without having to manipulate many different sheets. So in order to get started using the API, you're gonna go to your profile on the right-hand side, click profile, and here you will see an API key. You can click here to copy the key and you'll see that it's copied to your clipboard. Next, make sure you have a list that's ready to go. In my example, this is my list. Usually when you're using new softwares and APIs, you always wanna test out just a subset of records. So here I'm looking at a subset of five records from Chicago. So what I'm going to do is open up this Python notebook, which you could do in the link below. What I'm going to walk you through is how to use the API. And once you understand how to use the API, you'll be able to hook it up to any of your CRMs that you're using. Most CRMs have API integration. 
So Google Collab, if you're new to it, it's a programmatic way or a notebook to be able to program in Python. So you don't have to have Python installed in your machine at all. Here, if you go to File, and then you save a copy in your own drive, you'll be able to actually run the same notebook. There's two main key features that it does, is intelligent name matching. So say if the property owner, their name is Thomas, it's going to look for other similar names like Tom when it goes to those sites similar to Fast People Search so that it could find the right individual. Now I've seen other skip tracing services that don't do this will miss out on the correct property owner just based off of nicknames and variations of in that first or name. The second feature is in smart email matching. So it intelligently ranks these emails based on the likelihood of them being active and associated with that property owner. How this benefits investors? Two ways, cold calling efficiency. You are spending money every time you are contacting a property owner. Even if you're doing it yourself, time is money. So you wanna make sure that the contact you're using is correct. As well, you can streamline the process more easily by having these different options of contact information and the likelihood that they are actually associated with the individual. What sets Tracerify apart? For one, it's the low cost, which I love. Then it's also very easy to use, very user-friendly where you can upload a CSV or you could use their API. They have CRM integration and it's ideal for a wide range of users. So for example, targeting potential sellers, cold calling, maybe you're a wholesaler, or maybe even enhancing your contact database. So the way we first start is running our imports. These are all the packages we'll be using. Next is your API key. Remember your API key comes within your profile and then you click API key. So here I'm going back to the notebook. I'm going to click run and I'm going to paste my API key. This is how Tracerify knows that it's me when I'm actually sending a request. So for the data, there's two options here. You can either upload a file. So these are these three cells to upload a file. I'll read it in and I'll show up here. However, I'm gonna follow through option number two, which is creating a data frame. If you're going to be connecting this to your CRM, you are likely going to follow option number two because you will not have someone manually uploading a file. What I'm doing here is creating a data frame. So think of a table of rows and columns. So similar to how I have the option to upload data via an Excel file or CSV, I am going to do so, but programmatically using Python pandas. So I have my columns, address, city, state, first name, last name, mail address, mail city, and mail state. The first step here is to make a post request over to Tracerify to send our file. And in our headers, we're going to have our API key. So make sure that you have your API key and it's within the variable API key. So here I'm pressing play. And now we see we've created a new object, a QID 639 pending. What this means is that now our file is queued up to be skip traced. And the length of time that this takes is dependent on how many records you have. Usually with 100 records, it's less than a minute. 1,000 records, five minutes or less, and 10,000 records, about 50 minutes. So here I'm going to press play because I assume it's probably already done since it's been only a couple seconds, and it is. We receive our data in a JSON object, but it's a little bit more difficult to read. So here I'm going to transform it back into a data frame that I can more easily understand. Let's quickly walk through the data that was returned. We could see we have a primary phone number, a set of emails, as well as more numbers broken down between mobile as well as landline. Now the way Tracerify structures it is that they have the primary phone, the one that you should likely contact. However, if you are going through SMS, you do want to confirm that that is mobile. Next, for emails, they sort which emails are likely associated with that individual. They look at things like first name, last name, how often that email occurs between different sources. And from what we could see, we have pretty good results. We could see that these emails tend to either have the first or last name or some sort of variation in between. And this can really help us to market, not just directly via mail address, through mailers, or by phone numbers, say SMS or phone calls, but we can also hit our lead in a different way, which is through email. 
Now let's imagine that we take one of these properties and we actually want to make a deal with the seller. For one of those properties, I found that the seller actually owns 100% of their equity. How would we actually structure a deal to work? So since they have 100% equity, we could do seller finance, which would allow us to have a lower interest rate than if we were to go through traditional banking. But if we use our seller financing calculator with standard terms, we could see here that cash on cash is negative 9%. That means our investment would be losing out on money every single month. So what do we do? Do we start to toggle on price? Do we instead change the balloon rate, the interest rate? Well, we could actually use optimized deal terms here and we could set our parameters. So we have our price, rent, how much income we'll be likely getting, monthly costs, and then we have some information on the terms. Now, what I wanna highlight here are the two pieces at the bottom, is we have minimum seller earnings. So we wanna make sure this deal is not just good for us, but for the seller as well. We wanna make sure that with seller finance, they're able to get that 350K, so that value that they are asking for, and also make a return for ourselves. So here I've set our return to be at least 7% to beat the stock market or at least match it. So I'm going to click optimize deal, which is using an AI algorithm to then identify what is the best terms for this deal. Here we could see the best terms to reach 7.2% cash on cash. We'll be modifying our down payment from 10% to 5%, interest rate to 1%, slightly lower offer and balloon due in 10 years. So let's actually plug that in. So if we have a slightly lower offer, and if we go at 5% instead of 10%, interest rate at 1% and balloon due at 10 years, we could now see, I might've copied the price slightly incorrectly. I think it was a little bit lower, around three, four, three or so. Um, but either way, we could see that with these parameters, we can now hit our cash on cash while making the deal still good for the seller. And that's one of the advantages of being able to use this creative finance calculator with information like the property owner already involved. So that's a little bit of a bonus of how you'd be able to analyze some of these deals and structure terms when skip tracing property owners and ultimately making an offer to them. Hope this has been useful. Thanks for watching.